Just a second, I got some weird alarm going off. All right, that should be showing up for everyone. Right, yeah, I'm going to go see. ahead and drop the link in chat. If uh, you don't already have the community meeting notes pulled up, feel free to go ahead and pull that up real quick. Today is February 15th. So everyone can go ahead and log their attendance. That is something we do really appreciate everyone's participation on as we look at that over time and it helps us tell a bigger story. All right, very hard to hear me. Let's see, I can speak a little bit louder and adjust my mic. There we go, that should be better, I hope. All right, it looks like we have attendees logging attendance, so I appreciate that. And while you're in there, if you have anything to add to the agenda, um, either agenda notes, open floor, or any PRs, bugs, or mailing list items that you would like special attention on, please go ahead and add those now. I'll continue to watch for any late additions while we go through things, so don't worry if we don't see it on the first round through. All right, and of course, do we have any new attendees on the call who would like to introduce themselves, whether you're new on this call or just um, have been listening in and haven't introduced yourself before, we'd love the opportunity to go ahead and say hello and welcome you to the Kubert community. All right, no new introductions today. In that case, I'll go ahead and jump to agenda notes. Looks like uh, my art, we have uh, an item about uh, test passing. You want to speak to that? OK, so am I audible, first of all? Yes. OK, um, so there is this test about it's really, really old. It's uh, testing, uh, apparently, okay, so for context, there's something called owner references. And if an object has uh, an owner and this owner does not exist, then Kubernetes deletes that object. And we use that to make sure cleanup happens of like uh, extra items like pods and PVCs, I guess. And there's like a esoteric feature where you can delete with cascade false, where if the child objects uh, have an owner, it'll remove the owner first, and then they can keep existing. So your uh, in this case, we are deleting a VM object and we expect normally the VMI is owned by the VM if it was created by a VM and also like the PVC and a data volume. And we check that if you delete the VM, then the VMI with the cascade false, then the VMI exists. So that's just the background except like somewhat rarely it the VMI object just doesn't exist, which sounds kind of bad because we did not expect the VM to be gone and it is. However, 
I'm looking at the code for what, what it's doing. And I tried to run it manually and it actually failed all the time. And it looks like we have code that will readopt the orphans. And uh, so if you try to remove the owner like manually on a VMI that is owned by a VM, then Qvert will re-add it. And sometimes it uh, decides to also delete the VMI itself explicitly. So I don't know if it, it's kind of surprising it ever worked and it survived this long, this test. So uh, not so for sure. Like it's kind of weird to remove a test that's uh, several years old and say that it shouldn't have ever worked because it obviously does and then for a really long time. <laughs> Uh, does anyone have like, uh, like since the behavior to readopt orphans is so old, it's not something that seems like a good idea to change. Uh, I don't know. I wonder if anyone has any opinions on this. And just generally, I would like to bring attention to this issue. Yeah, I, I definitely can't speak authoritatively about this because it's not something that I've worked on or, or that familiar with, but it would make sense to me that you wouldn't want to have an orphaned machine lying around. So I could see why you might want to make sure that someone owns that VM. Uh, but at the same time, it's weird that there's this uh, inconsistent behavior that you pointed out. So we don't really have to solve everything in this. I just wanted to bring attention if and if someone would like to discuss the issue in the the has thoughts on the issue, then discussing it on the open issue is a good idea. I guess it requires a, it's a lot to mention at once. <laughs> I mean, you would think because so and, and maybe I'll, I'll just go and look at it and maybe we can talk about it a bit more on there. But this is just more, again, kind of abstract or, or hypothetically. But you would think that you, know, you would want that to kind of be the default behavior. If you kill a parent, you don't want to have any 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 children VMs left behind without explicitly stating so. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up and, and see if I can, if we can have a discussion about it on there. So in, in this case, delete without the cascade false thing, which doesn't leave the VMI and other objects uh, around. That's the default. This is some kind of uh, alternative delete behavior where it uh, orphans, it's supposed to orphan the resources that are previously owned by it. And is the, the idea there that maybe another machine will use that same resource? Um, in this case, uh, like the test itself is testing that you created the VMI by uh, setting running on a VM, I guess. And if you delete the VM, uh, you're still left with a VMI that's still, you can still use that. Um, you can you can you can create a VMI without a VM object. I think. Actually, I'm not one hundred percent sure about this. It's a good question. Uh, again, I'll 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 do what I can to look at that again. I'm not super familiar with it. It's not something I've worked on. And just again, from a um, you know aspect of just looking at it for, as an objective third party, <laughs> seems kind of interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. All right, and then it looks like the next next item is about ARM64 supported releases. Uh, do you want to go ahead and speak to that? Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, okay. So uh, currently, the uh, CI testing on ARM64 works well. So I want. Uh, discuss about uh, how, what is the next step we need to do to make 
uh, QBVert officially released ARM64 version ima image and the binaries. So I list some uh, some points here. And the Ray helped me to uh, list some more. Uh, like, uh, do we need to add more E2E -E testing? Or uh, what E2E -E testing we need to add to make uh, QBVert officially release on 64 images? Uh, uh, yeah. One related question I had is that um, do, can we can we um, start the existing test suit uh, with um, ARM? Is that possible? Uh, we enable uh, some core tests uh, in some compute. I'm um, 64 for now, uh, but for uh, network and the uh, storage, uh, there is no test. Uh, we, we, we do not have uh, the e 2 test on I'm 64 for now. Okay, thanks. So I think that you, I think you need to first, we have the list of conformance tests, which some, some, uh, some vendors are using to run, instead of running three hours of 10 hours of test, they just run this, these guys. Yes. Uh, so you, you could try to, to, we could try to say that this is the, a representative test or features that need to run but i also i'm not really sure that it's it is enough uh, but it is a starting point and maybe it, it is worth uh, opening uh, i don't know a thread or uh, or, uh, or part of some document of which features uh, you want to cover and then anything that is not supported, you will just say it's an exception that doesn't work. But that's a general, uh, I, I'm generalizing it. I don't have a good answer. Maybe someone here knows more. Hey, okay. hey Howard, I had a question for you. So the, what, uh, what are like, would you say are the remaining barriers for you to to make the remaining test suites work, like the remaining core test suites, like network storage. Is that something that, is it kind of your approach is that you think that we, um, that we just, that we need compute and that that should be enough and, and then, or is it like, are you still trying to get these network and storage lanes to pass with our, um, I want to uh, verify the network and storage on M64, um, but not of uh, all the tests. Yes, so uh, I would like to have uh, like some list or uh, like uh, Edward said uh, the like the make the conformance test works on ARM first. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure the conformance test includes some uh, networking test or storage test. So I guess what I what I would advise on this and is that like when kind of when we look when looking at some of the PRs for some of the stuff or even just a PR in general, right? There are the mm -hmm. the core lanes that run on every PR, and, and there is the ARM test that runs in there. <clears throat> Having the Having additional tests that include network and storage, I think, really empowers the case of having an official release for ARM. And even if it's just a subset, I think kind of the, the question here becomes, you know, if I was a user and I was to show up and wanted to look at QVert and, and I'm wondering what is the extent that ARM is supported, I, I, I think if we're going to say it's an official release, what I'd expect is I'd want to know the answer to that question. What is 
you know, what is the extent of the support? And so that would mean like, you know, what are the features that, that are supported that are document and they're documented. That's you know, essentially what's the standard is on for x86 and that the, the code for the features that are supported are, are tested in, in CI lanes. So I think like the where it's what it sounds like what the what there still is a gap is that there are some tests that we haven't done. We haven't confirmed the features, at least the features that we that we want to support. And I don't know the extent of it, whether it's been documented. But to me, like those would be the things that I'd say are would would get you a lot closer to saying that we're making a case that we, about an official release for ARM. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so I suppose to um, write a document to uh, write down the futures we have verified on ARM64 and the futures we are not verified on ARM64, right? I think that would be a really good step. I think for a user who wanted to see like what's supported, I think that would be very valuable. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then the other part of this is that all the features that have been validated are are running in CI lanes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the second one supports long. Uh, I think it's hybrid thread cores in. Uh, VMI v API. I, uh, so Ray, you are doing this right now, right? Yeah, so this is something we uh, we were looking at. Um, yeah, so this is for people who don't know, like this is, um, there's a threads field on the VMIs and the assumption is, at least I'm pretty sure the assumption is hyper, core, is hyper threads and on ARM cores, you don't have that. And so, we need to come up with a solution for how we deal with this, how we assign CPUs. So yeah, nice. like we're uh, we're looking at this um, right now, and we have some we have some work that we we've, we've done. So we can take that one. Cool. And the sort of what hybrid support. <laughs> mm, uh, yeah, this is a good future, but I don't think it's um, uh, this will block. Uh, officially release of ARM 64 image, right? Yeah, I, I agree, Howard. I think the reason I'm mentioning this is because I I think I've seen like four issues or more on this, and um, and there's a PR that's already open for it, and um, it's already been a lot of work done for it, and it's been reviewed extensively. So I I don't think it's a blocker. I just wanted to call it out that because people have had a lot of interest in it because they're mm -hmm. doing, I don't know, they're maybe using ARM computer, ARM control plane and an x86 yeah, for the yeah. other. Yes, I see. Okay, and as the last one, um, do we need to make support on CDI? CDI. Uh, Do we have any CDI folks here? Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. we build the images. Um, are you are you talking? Far as I far as I know, um, Alexander Wells does, does more of the build stuff, but pretty sure we build the ARM images. What other um, what else do you need? Assuming that that exists. Uh, yes, I know CDI is important, uh, uh, but is it, um, so if uh, we, uh, current for now, we do not support CDI on ARM64, and uh, where this block uh, the officially release for QBvert uh, image or binaries. Um, what, what's broken? Um, how to say that? Um, so, uh, I mean, do we have to support CDI first 
then QBBert uh, community can officially uh, uh, release ARM64 image and binary. Yeah, uh, I guess this is something uh, we can bring up with uh, uh, Alexander Wells, if you put a, a, a note there. Um, as far so, um, yeah, um, Maya, uh, what, what do you do? You have any idea? What... Uh, idea about what? I think we did build the uh, ARM sixty four CDI images, although I haven't tested them recently. Yeah, so I just took a look at Quay, and it looks like there are there are ARM sixty four images that are pushed there. Um, although, yeah, um, I guess we do uh, no testing specifically on ARM for CDI, so it would be weird to say that it is supported. Ah, right. We don't have a way to test them. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, uh, um, yeah, if, if that's the concern, then yeah, we should look into that. I, I actually understood the question differently. Sorry. <laughs> I understood. I, I thought that the question is like, can covert be, uh, be released as uh, supporting ARM64 without CDI support. Uh, yes, you are right. It is what I mean. Ah. Uh, um, well, uh, can't regular Kubert be released without CDI? I'm pretty sure. Yes, network, for example, is not, uh, you can run you can run it like for just an example. Uh, network tests do not use CDI, so we don't even install it. For yeah, um, yeah, and the, we do check. Uh, yeah, you just can't use any of the data volume stuff, obviously. But yeah, you should be able to um, uh, have Kubert without CDI. On our so, I have a question. So if we release Kubert without CDI. Um, how do we prevent users from um, like, what is the error message that will say, oh, because I'm using um, CDI is not supported and hence I should not use this. Um, Sorry, I'm well, not yeah, so I think if you create a VM that has data volume templates, we'll check um, to see that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we check it in the webhook, but Obviously, even if the VM gets created, um, the for controller won't be able to create the data volumes later. Um, so your VM will never get provisioned. But I think that there is a check in the webhook. Um, you can you can check, but okay. yeah, the, basically the the that's the main interaction with the Kubert API is that there are uh, um, the data volume templates embedded in a VM. And it would be easy enough to validate in the webhook if uh, CDI is installed. Makes sense. So if we say we can release it without, um, we can release the ARM support without CDI, is that something we would have to add or it's already present? I think it should already be there. I'm pretty sure we, we check for CDI support. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'd be very surprised. If yeah. Okay, thank you, Michael. All right, let's see what we got. Um, so I think one one more point regarding this. So for for features that we say um, that we are not going to support for ARM, does it make sense to have similar um, webhook tests or checks to make sure that 
um, we give the user the correct um, error while creating ARM VMs. Like mm. this is uh, this is in parallel to the point that Ryan was mentioning that we need a document that describes the uh, supported and not supported features. Maybe one more step forward would be to add that uh, webhook check validation to make sure users get correct error messages. Let yes, me of it. course. <laughs> I, I think it doesn't, I mean, it, it's, uh, we are in a reconciled uh, situation. So first of all, you cannot install, you will not be able to deploy CDI if, if then, if you don't have where to deploy them. And, and the nodes may be, part of them may be ARM and part of them may not be ARM. So it will, it, I guess the, the need will be that they, some, some things cannot run on some nodes, something like that. And some feature, if a VMI lands on a, on some specific node, it will not just not be able to either start or use the feature. So it will just blow up. But yeah. I don't know if so, you can go to this deep, like. Uh... So what I'm suggesting is that instead of having that VMI um, go in into a state where it will not start up, can we block at the API level where if we have a list of fields that are supported, we can have add that check um, during creation and uh, webhook validation state. No, I think we don't do this even now because again, it's like the VMI will not be scheduled. I mean, let's let's say let's assume that uh, uh, you want to run it somewhere and you only have uh, and it cannot run on any on any existing nodes because, for example, the hardware uh, type. So it will just not be scheduled because it has nowhere to to land. So I don't know how can you check it at the webhook. You cannot check it. You don't. I mean, you can. You may have one hundred nodes, ten of them ARM, and on this ARM, you can. You will say that you cannot run these uh, machines. I, don't I think, think Ali. Can... I think what Ali is referring to, like, give me an example. It's like it would be a feature we support in x86 that we don't support on ARM. Like one example, and this isn't this isn't the case, but let's just imagine that we didn't support um, SRV attaching an SRV network or something, and the VMI spec has an SRV network on it. And as part of the VMI, it has it has the architecture defined for, for ARM for whatever reason. So um, in that case, we know SRV is not supported. So the question is, should we should we deny it at the API level? Because we know it's an invalid VMI because we're not supporting it because we know ARM isn't gonna support this. Okay, but when will you know this? How do you know that you run on, a, on an ARM node? So you, you can know. okay, yeah. So this is where okay. So this is where it gets to. I think this is where it gets into that hybrid support PR because that hybrid support PR allows you to actually specify. It adds a new architecture field that allows you to specify which node to run on. So we can actually figure out ahead of time if we're going to be targeting an ARM node or not. Okay, yeah, so, but... so I get. I guess you you are. So there is a, actually, a, I think there is some kind of disagreement or a, an argument about should you what should you do at the web, webhook level and what you, you should do at the reconcile level. So some say that in the webhook level, you should do this or this validation and some mm -hmm. claim that you should just uh, let them the, all the things to just flow. And if it is not able to do that, uh, then scream that it's impossible or something like that uh, but yeah 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 i think maybe we need to this is something we can revisit i think we have to like i think we can't do this until we at least have the hybrid support pr because i, I don't think it can be we can even discuss it i think to to your point because um we we have no way of knowing because we won't know the runtime we won't know where we're scheduled that's that's much farther down the pipeline than the API. We would only know if we if we had it on the VMI spec, and then then it's really a matter of like whether it makes sense from a policy standpoint, and that's something we can discuss. But we don't we don't I don't think we have 
the proper tools to to at least have this discussion you know Leia. so i think we need to wait yeah i agree and i think if even if uh <clears throat> like for example with like but like CDI could populate a, a data volume on a um, you know on a non-ARM node, and that data and that PVC could be used on a ARM node later or something like that. So that would be hard to validate. Um, yeah. Or no upfront. Um, but I did look into the code quickly, and it doesn't look like our webhook does any checking. Um, and I think that may be consistent with like what Edward was saying about. Um, uh upfront validation versus just letting things go yeah it doesn't look like we do any validation at the data volume the cdi is installed in a webhook level and the assumption is probably that someone could later uh you know see that the vm didn't get provisioned and install cdi later or something like that so um ryan a, a follow-up question to that is like I think you said that we need to figure out how um, we would be able to make these kinds of um, validation because the info doesn't exist. So um, can we say that like um, figuring out that part is at least before the release is a blocker for release? Because like the concern I have is if we don't add any validation, whether this is ARM or not, um, and what features are supported, then I fear like we will start seeing issues where like users are using some features on x86 and same users are using that feature in ARM. It works on one and it doesn't work on the other. And well, there's there's sort of a, there's sort of a balance here in that one could argue that if we document this well enough, then any user doesn't. You know, if the user is not following the documentation of what we're saying is supported, then then that's unfortunate. And but I understand also the argument of like, okay, it worked on x86, so I expect this to just work everywhere. And um, and I'm, and I'm not going to read the documentation. That that could happen too. So I, I I could see both sides of this. So I mean, I think what you're saying is like where maybe what we need to do is we need to say that the hybrid support part of this is a blocker, and then the discussion of um, of whether this is a should be a webhook or not need to be the blocker for for the for the arm release, right? Yeah, that we can defer uh, yeah. to future releases, but at least the hybrid support or or at least a plan of how we're going to validate these things. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Um, okay, I I don't know. I mean, I think I, I guess we could go the way. I mean, to me, like. I, I think at the end of the day that this hybrid support thing is likely to not end up blocking. I think it's going to be merged soon. So I'm, I'm sort of like, I kind of want to wait for, before we decide anything because I, I kind of think it's going to resolve itself because it's very far along and I think it's going to probably merge before we decide on when we're going to release um, in our official release. So I think we're going to have our answer anyway, regardless of whether we call it a block or not. Okay. Makes sense. Question. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start combing through. Let's see, I don't see anything new added, so I'm going to go ahead start combing through PRs real quick.
and that gets us back a week. Let's see what we got here. Check testing is in progress with that, and it's not idle. What do we have on this one? Uh, update readmes to reflect, reflect proper found and add in sample doc files. Awesome. All right. So that doesn't look idle. Do the same on the mailing list. Seeing some great activity on there, of course, recently. Web based commit and sign offs, that would be nice. Let's see. Let's provisionary release and that gets us back to last week. Do the same for bug scrubs and that should conclude for today. So let's see what we have here. Another request to build ARM versions of the vert O binary. I remember that we had uh, go in, but go get was working at one point, wasn't it? But I don't remember what the command is. Does anyone on the call remember what the go get? command is to pull in the vert CTL and build it locally on ARM. I think I got it. Let me see. I'm going to save that one and answer it here in a bit. Um, yeah, we're definitely missing that overall. Um, Some of this CentOS 9 stuff coming up. We just covered. And that gets us past last week. All right, then in that case, we looks like we've covered everything on the agenda. Any last call outs or shout outs real quick? Going once, going twice. All right, and that concludes this week's Cooper Community Meeting. As always, thank you for your attendance and for your participation. I appreciate all of the great conversation today. Uh,
that so. case, I think we looks like we've covered everything on the agenda. Any last call outs or shout outs real quick? Going once, going twice. All right, and that concludes this week's Cooper Community Meeting. As always, thank you for your attendance and for your participation. I appreciate all of the great conversation today. And Sounds good. Thank you. That all stops sharing. Thanks. Bye. Bye. We'll see you same time, same place next week.